Hey, welcome back. It's Darren from the Industrial Revolution channel. Uh, this is part seven of our seven part video course on understanding early steam power and atmospheric engines. If you just joined here and you want to jump back to the beginning, there should be a link up here. If there's not, there's a link down in the description to each of the seven videos. Anyway, if you just came back from the video on, on this engine here, this 1811 watt canal pump, uh, you're probably looking at this and saying, this looks an awful lot like the Newcomen engine that we started with that's 100 years older. And honestly, it is. Uh, it's still a beam engine. It's still mostly the same structure. Many of the features added to this really didn't help at all. Uh, so really, the only thing that really helped was that external condenser. Uh, the rest of it was really just bells and whistles, as we discussed in that, that video that you just watched. Uh, they didn't change much uh, through the 18th century. Really, they didn't change much through the 19th century. And there's still some, some beam engines like this that were made in the 20th century as well. You know, the original Newcomen design, it just worked. So what are all those innovations that Watt added to this engine? Double acting piston doesn't really help. You don't really need the extra power pushing the pump shaft down. Uh, the parallel motion up here at the top, absolutely critical for a rotative motion if you want to actually make something go round and round instead of just up and down. Again, for the canal pump, not really useful. Uh, the steam jacketed uh, cylinder did help some. Uh, it certainly improved efficiency. Uh, got the cylinder up to temperature quicker as well. But beyond that, most of those uh, improvements weren't so much improvements. I think he did them just because he could. So more to the point, if these things were so great, if they're so innovative, if they did everything we wanted, why aren't we still using atmospheric engines today? Well, that really comes down to boiler technology. In 1802, Oliver Evans created the first practical fluid boiler, and that didn't really get picked up too quickly because in 1812, Richard Trevithick uh, invented this, the Cornish boiler. Uh, the Cornish boiler is a horizontal fluid boiler. So you light the fire, and it goes through a metal flue, the full length of the boiler goes out the back end, then comes around through the massive brick structure, heating the water inside again. Remember, the surface area that you heat is the amount of heat you get off of it. And the Cornish boilers allowed you to get up to about 25 PSI above ambient. Now this one, I don't know exactly where this one started, but you can see it's, uh, it's had better days. It's, little rust hole there in the end. This one's probably not going to hold much pressure. But boilers like this allowed you to get rid of the whole process of condensing steam. Instead of having maybe a 10 PSI max difference, you could now do a 25 PSI max difference very easily without the condenser, without any of that work. So Watt's patents expired, well, his main patent expired in 1800 and combined with Trevithick's Cornish boilers uh, atmospheric engines just just were done. Uh, if you still had one, you still used it, they still worked, but now that you had high pressure steam that was available safely, high pressure steam being something that if you look at the old James Watt documentation he referred to as strong steam, uh, with strong steam, high pressure, there's no reason to build one of these anymore. So no one built them, but they didn't go away either. So these engines were built to last uh, at slow speeds and low pressure. Uh, with basic maintenance, they could last a long time. We don't know exactly when this uh, Nokomen 1712 engine was finally retired, but we do know that in the mid 1800s, it got a new boiler after being in use for about 150 years. And don't know how long it lasts after that, but it made it at least 150 years, finally closing when the mine shut down.
the two Watt steam engines that we've looked at, uh, these were both used in British canals and they were actually still pumping water for those canals in the 1920s when Henry Ford decided he wanted to purchase them to move them into the museum here in Dearborn, Michigan. Part of the purchase price, because these were still operational, still essential to canal operations, Henry had to buy the canal system new diesel canal pumps. So those three engines running more than a century is not even an anomaly. It was common. This is the more of a mine pump engine. And this one actually also ran well into the 20th century. The cylinder for it was built in the late 1700s. It underwent a number of changes since then. Uh, working in a, a coal mine, they had lots of scrap coal available, so fuel cost wasn't really a concern. Uh, they did actually use something called a pickle pot down in the bottom there. That's sort of a way to, to kind of cheat watt a little bit. It's an external condenser down there. But really, if you had a Newcomen engine and it was working, why would you replace it? You just kept running it. The boiler would eventually fail and you'd replace the boiler, just like you know, your tires eventually fail on your car today and you replace those. So once high pressure steam was available and it was safe, these huge engines largely went away. There were still some applications where you needed that kind of, that kind of size, that kind of power even with high pressure steam. But it really ushered in an, an era of far, far smaller engines. Instead of being you know, maybe 50 feet tall, some of these are 15 feet tall and actually produce even more power. So these engines were cheaper to build, they were cheaper to run, they were more efficient, took up a lot less space. So the time of building atmospheric engines, I'm afraid, was over. So Thomas Newcomen and James Watt were both unquestionably geniuses. Uh, they, between them, really invented most of what we know today as steam power. There were huge advances that came after them once we had high pressure steam available, huge advances in boiler technology that allowed for those improvements. But it was really Newcomen and Watt that introduced this and really got the world to accept that steam power was the future. Once the boilers caught up, with Trevithick's Cornish boiler especially. Uh, that led to smaller cylinders, led to more power, led to things like steam-powered locomotives, for example. Uh, something that you really could not do with an atmospheric engine. And now we don't really see atmospheric engines at all anymore. As far as I know, there are none currently operating in a, an actual production environment. And that's kind of unfortunate. I hear there's a couple of museums in England that do still run an atmospheric engine in a museum setting, uh, either newer than these or replicas. But as far as I know, there's nothing operating in production. So I hope you've enjoyed this course on understanding early steam power and atmospheric engines. As I mentioned through this, uh, if you have any questions at all, uh, please ask down in the comments here. Um, I love reading your comments. Uh, I usually answer very quickly. Uh, so I'd love to hear if you have more information, more questions, uh, if you know of any atmospheric steam engines that are running today, that would be great also. Uh, but let's help spread this throughout the, uh, the YouTube universe here. So be sure to like the video, all the videos in this. Uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And share the videos with your friends. If you uh, are able to and interested in helping out, uh, a couple ways you can help out financially. Uh, it's a fairly expensive channel to operate due to the travel costs. Uh, you can help out at Patreon at patreon.com slash industrial revolution. Uh, also uh, here on YouTube, uh, you can hit super thanks or become a, a channel member here on YouTube. So again, hope you enjoyed the uh, seven part course here on understanding early steam. And until next time, I'm Darren and these colossal steam engines these are the Industrial Revolution.